Urban Bean downtown, it's like really recognizable. It's it's an orange coffee shop. Okay. And it's like really groovy and retro. But anyway, it's like connected to this really old parking garage. And apparently there's a club underneath that parking garage. And the only way to go in is like by going underground in the parking garage. So basically when you're walking down to it, it's completely pitch black and you just don't really know where you're going. So I've been wanting to go there for a really long time. And I went, I was walking in there or we walked into the parking garage and we were making our way down the ramp and this, the parking attendant comes out. And he's like this Indian dude. And he is, he just like told us like, where are you going? And my it, friend, it wasn't like, what's a, what's the password situation? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that is it. Maybe that's that part I, of the password that, is where, what are you doing? Where, where are you going? That's yeah. exactly what I thought. So, but I, uh, since my friend, she had been there before she was, I let her just like take the lead because she, I thought she would know what to do. Okay. So I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. And Yaz was like, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going down to go get my car. And he's like, there's no cars down there. And so, she's like. So that is not the password. That is not the password. <laughs> so she was like, uh, she's like, yeah, I mean, she, she was like talking to him about something, but she's like, I, she's like, you know why we're going down there. Yeah. And he's like, it's not open. It's not open until September. They're doing construction. Right so now. he does work for the club. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and she's she's like, you're lying to me. He's like, no, I'm not, I'm not lying. He's like, you guys aren't allowed to go down there. Don't go down there. Yeah. And she like kept trying to call his bluff and she would like basically like inch closer as she was. Just kind of. Yeah, like go away. Hey, walk with me. Talk <laughs> with me. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, Basically, like we ended up not going, because uh, he was being he was kind of being aggressive. So like every weekend now, you have to try to try to go down there, figure out how to get down there. Either one, not be seen by whoever is guarding it, or figure out what that password <laughs> is. Yeah, I mean, I honestly feel like that was it. Like he was just telling you not to go, but you can just go. You can actually just go. Yeah, maybe it's you don't talk to him. Maybe you're just supposed to treat him Keep like crap game. and just don't talk to him. <laughs> maybe he's like one of those people that gets off on being treated like shit. <laughs> That's why they <laughs> That's brought why him. <laughs> just call me a dickhead and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me my mother hates me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to be anything more than a security guard, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, you'll be something someday. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Well, so there's another place right next to it called Cafe de Mongo's. Okay. Do you know what that is? I, I don't know where anything is. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be down there a lot more now, yeah. which is cool because I, I do feel a little ashamed having lived in Michigan my entire life yeah. and not really knowing Detroit all that yeah. well, like yeah. the major streets, the major spots that people like to hang out or eat. Yeah. Like, And obviously there was a time when I was like, you know a kid and a teenager you wouldn't go there because it hadn't turned around the way that it has now but yeah, yeah even now like given the fact that the doors are open and everything's great there i still just can't quite make it down for some reason <laughs> well i think i think this is exciting because now that you're going to be down there you know we can take you around that's true yeah and sid too like i think she knows a little bit more than me just because she yeah. goes to school there now and she's checked out a bunch of different spots but um the nightlife, I don't think she's really participated in yet either. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey man, I'm always show, down to party. Show me the ways. Yeah. yeah, you used to live there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Cafe de Mango, actually, I think you'd love that place. So it's been there forever. And it's like a really, it's like a, just imagine a bar that has like low ceilings and there's a live band there that's been playing there for the past 30 years. Uh, they're all old dudes that have been playing there forever. Yeah. Uh, and it's all like a very f like family feel in there. So they've been there. They've been there before. They were there during bad times and now they're here during the good times. And so it gets packed in there all the time. The, the guy like that owns it, Larry, he like, you know, walks around, says hi to everybody and the music there is always like really uh, like Jimi Hendrix-ish oh. and like, dude, it's so nice. Cool. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Like that's the kind of bar, that's the kind of place that I've, I want to own one day. So it was cool because Larry was there last night and as we were leaving, I was like, 
I was like, Larry, uh, I just want to let you know you're an inspiration to me, and I would love to open up a bar like this one day. And he's like, yeah, man, you know, all you really have is your dreams, and, you know, you can do anything. Basically saying, like, you can do whatever you put your mind to type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what was crazy is this guy, he's been interviewed, like, a ton of times for different uh, shows and podcasts. So there's a podcast called Crime Town. Okay. And what Crime Town is is every season it'll cover a different city uh, and, like, go through the history of the different, like, major figures that have done bad shit, basically. Sure. So season two is about Detroit, and then they talk about, like, Kwame and Coleman Young and all this. And then for a lot of the podcasts, they're interviewing Larry because him and his brothers have, like, been a part of a lot of that stuff. How old is he? Yeah, he's, like, 80. B- really? He's really old. <laughs> and he's still, like, hanging out there, like, talking to people and yeah. telling people to follow their dreams <laughs> at 80 years old? Yeah. Oh, my God. He's cool. Yeah, he sounds like it. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I'm excited for you to be down there. We can go yeah, there. yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I I don't know enough. I should know, being you know over 30 at this point, not knowing one of the major cities in this country, and it's in my own backyard. Like it's 40 minutes away. Yeah. How do I not know her? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm, like, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm definitely ashamed. Yeah. Oh. Man. Yeah. But how many, so if he's been on a bunch of podcasts and you've interviewed a bunch of people for podcasts, Mm -hmm. how many podcasts do you listen to? And how do you not steal other people's shit? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I think, like, steal other people's ideas. Yeah, because, like, there are thousands of podcasts now. Everybody can do one, which is awesome. We're doing one right now. Like, and they can either be about, specific stuff like you know like you got those history podcasts and science writing there's one i think i've only ever listened to three podcasts in my life and yours is one of them oh, cool. and um <laughs> okay maybe four but and like there's there's one that i i found on spotify randomly called uh call her daddy <laughs> yeah, have yeah, you heard yeah. that one yeah when I, I, I listened to one episode and i thought this is stupid, stupid. i yeah. hate these girls and then when i listened to a second episode I'm like Okay, they're pretty funny. <laughs> like, I, if I, I, th- I think I've learned a few things from them that yeah. I thought, like, I thought I knew women. I, how, no, no, yeah. not, yeah. no, I'm learning stuff still. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're they're so intelligent yet very vulgar. S- yeah, vulgar. Soft spoken is not a part of their yeah. description at all. So I don't remember their names, but uh, they they're awesome. <laughs> There's another podcast called Guys We Fucked. <laughs> it's like yeah. along the same lines. Yeah, like, dude, it's crazy. And I think like you know the thing is is there's so many podcasts. Okay, the ability for people to the barrier of entry for people to create things in general now mm. is really low. Anybody can create videos and podcasts or whatever music. Yeah, and the reason that's so great is because. It, it it's allowing people to get into more like niche areas. Mm-hmm. So like, there might be a podcast somewhere uh, that's really really popular, but you might have never heard of it or will never hear about it. And those people are making a living off of right. their their fan base, which is crazy. And you know? like the places and products they probably talk about, like yeah. And they probably were using these things in their everyday life, and they're just like. Oh, my friend had this issue. Like, oh, I use this stuff, and it's like, you know, like cleared up my skin, whatever. And then like that company hears about it, and they end up like, here, here's two hundred bucks a month. Keep mentioning us, you know, whatever. Oh like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's so easy, and all you have to do is just turn something on. Yeah. But you gotta, you gotta fill that air, obviously. <laughs> like. Yeah, and I, it, I mean, it totally depends. Like, there are podcasts that I will listen to that I listen to because I feel like I want to learn something. Mm or I want to hear something uh, educational. But there's also, like, podcasts like Call Her Daddy or whatever that, like, people are just bullshitting around, and I just want to turn off and just want to listen to that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, even though, like you said, the if the bar is so low yeah. for anybody to make anything, would you say that everybody can make something? Like, in the sense of, yeah. you know, you've heard, like, you know, people have a face for TV or a face for radio do you think everybody should producing should be producing something if they can 
Uh, they don't. I mean, if I think that if you feel like you want to share something, then you should go ahead and do it mm -hmm. because you, anybody can do it, right? But I, I also think like, yeah, I mean, it's it's if your goal is to blow up or to gain some kind of big audience, you got to realize that that is really really difficult. Sure. Yeah. Right. But if you're creating for the sake of uh, you know, wanting a creative outlet and not really being concerned about who's going to listen to this or uh, if whoever is listening to it is just like your friends. Mm -hmm. Like, that's cool, you know? Yeah. And that, hey, Kalik. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I, I hear, like, people on, you know, Instagram, their pages, they'll do little clips of, like, their own shows or their comedy, whatever it might be. And... I sometimes think like, okay, what was their goal? Because like, it didn't connect with me, obviously. And then my immediate reaction is, oh man, stop making this stuff. Yeah. Like, and I know that's not really a healthy attitude to have, but sometimes I just feel like there's so much stuff out there. Like, I don't want to see more. I want to see less. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, it's, there's such an overload of content. And yeah. like, someone could be watching us right now and be thinking like, this didn't need to happen. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's 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 tough to say. And then you when you mentioned people saying like, you know, they they want to blow up. Well, what does that mean? Like right. they just want to be overall famous and be as popular as like Dwayne Johnson or are they trying yeah. to blow up like in their own community where you know, like locally they're known or something like that? Well, I so that's I think that goes back to the niche thing. So like uh they just did like a recent poll with kids about what they want to what their number one profession would be. They all want to be YouTube stars. Yeah, and YouTubers number one. So the reason, <sighs> and the thing is, is like, there are so many YouTubers out there that have millions of followers, but we don't know about them, and they make livings off of that. Yeah. Right? Because they've captured the attention of like, such an, either a niche audience, or the people in the, like, the local vicinity. And, I mean, that, I mean, I think that's, I think that's awesome. You know, uh, but I, I also do think that it does create uh, like a delusion almost, you know, where like everybody can be a star. Yeah. 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 yeah I guess I could see that, you know. Um, yeah. Like my one of my friends, he has his own uh, ASMR channel yeah i can't remember what it stands for but I, like i know it's like it has something to do with like it's like the auto clicks or something. yeah and yeah. you know it's supposed to like calm people down and he has like i think he's in like ten thousand or something like that followers or whatever so he he found his market he found a thing that he likes to do and like the fact that ten thousand people in this world know that he exists i think that's a that's achieving a level of like blowing up because oh, yeah, yeah. that's ten thousand like that's a pretty big number yeah you know like you could you could fill a small venue of like like what is what is the fox theater seat that many yeah less fewer i don't know i don't know like you could fill that whole place and people are there just to see you like yeah i think you made it yeah. right yeah i don't know ten thousand people <laughs> like that's nuts that's a I mean, and that's like the exact point. Yeah. Is like, so Tim, you know Tim Ferriss? Yeah. Four hour work week guy? Yeah. Okay. He was, he said that all you really need uh, to like make a living off of creating is, I think it was like a thousand true fans. If you have a thousand people that you know will listen to everything you put out, read everything you put out, will pay for everything yeah. that, like your performances or whatever, yeah. then you're good. Okay. You know? Or it was either a thousand or ten thousand. So these are like these are true like disciples of your of yeah. you. Like yeah, exactly. your brand, you whatever it is that you're you're preaching or yeah. selling or informing. Yeah. I guess yeah, I've never heard that before. Yeah, really all you need is a thousand people. That's yeah. not that many people. It's no. not, but it's also like it is it is difficult to do that. Oh yeah, I'm sure. You know. Uh and it is I think it can be discouraging when you see people like the uh, you know, you know the how about that girl, on Doctor Phil? Oh, the cash me out. Yeah, that yeah, one? Cash me out yeah, 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 yeah. Like she's, you know, after that she blew up. Like she's got millions of followers. She's got record deals, like all that stuff. You know. She like rapping she, she now makes, or something. Yeah, she or? raps. She she makes millions of dollars, like every year. 
and she didn't really have to do much and she is not exactly like a great uh, role model you know but she still has that I hate using this word influence yeah 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 exactly oh yeah that yeah I guess that that is kind of the point where it's like you don't you don't need to be good enough you just have to let people know that you exist right is that really the I mean to, yeah. to your point of her like yeah. I, there are plenty of people who I know who are and yeah she can totally take offense to this there are plenty of people who are that I know are who are more intelligent than she will ever be yeah. I'm sure she's not like going back to school or anything like that or maybe she did go to school I don't know anything about her yeah. but and they will never achieve the level of fame or success success that she has yeah. um, simply because they didn't say some ignorant line that now everybody turned into an auto-tune song or yeah yeah I guess that kind of pisses me off like that yeah. that is a thing now mm -hmm. we used to be such intelligent people we're really not anymore but here's the thing though is I don't I think that saying that we were intelligent people is not a true statement really because I think that Okay, because the ability to put out content now is available for everybody, mm -hmm. it's just like now you see, it's it's easier to see people's like true natures and true intents and how they actually are, I think. Uh, whereas before, because because the people that you were seeing on media were so filtered and so limited mm -hmm. that there was a perception of, oh, this is... Like they represent the majority, oh, but that's not true. Because we were only seeing what we thought was intelligence. Exactly. Or, yeah, but don't you think that, it, let's say at least 50 years ago, it's not too far. Yeah. 50 years ago, everybody was like, you know, they had TVs, obviously, but people were reading still. People were actually like going down the street and talking to people, like physically yeah. talking to them and exchanging ideas and. Yeah not just calling them on the phone like yeah they use the phone still but it right. was the idea of like i have to pick something up and actually use my eyes and scan through it and process it rather than look at a video and not really pay attention to it yeah. and, I, and this is kind of a i guess sort of a catch not catch 22 but it's just what's the difference between reading something and analyzing it versus watching it and analyzing right. it like how much do you retain? Right. I guess that's where I was saying we were a little bit more intelligent. Like we actually had to analyze things ourselves. Yeah. So I think I think there's two things there. I think one is because of uh, like limited options. I think that I think that humans in general do better when they have limited options. Okay. That where if you only have a few things to read or a few things to pay attention to, then it's easier to process those things. Uh, which is why it's. So my second point, everything now is like content overload mm. so that when you're sc scrolling or just like watching a bunch of YouTube videos, you're not retaining any of that information because there's so much of it. Right. And so like now it's more so on the individual to be um, uh, intentional about the content that they're consuming uh, because like, I mean, the, you know, I like I started getting anxiety because of all that shit mm. you know so like okay well I realize that so I'm scaling it back and I know that uh, I want to read about this thing so I'm gonna read about it I'm gonna think about it I'm gonna talk about it mm. but I'm not gonna like read article after article after article and then like not remember what I just read right you know so I think that uh, in the same vein that when people say like make America great again, right? Mm -hmm. What people are saying when they say make America great again is that they basically wanna, all this like shit that is in the air now, all this uh, inclusivity and acceptance and all that is in the air mm -hmm. and it's in America and they just wanna put it back under the rug, um, you know? Um. And I think that like, because they didn't have to, they didn't have to see it, they didn't like, if you don't, uh, if you don't see it, then you don't need, you don't need to think about it, and like you can just live your life. And I think it's I think it's similar. Uh, I just I, I think that like back then things were a lot more filtered, and now everything is a lot more raw. So it is it's hard to. Uh, 
I think it can it can be easy to be uh, like have a negative mindset. Do you think yeah. more people are because when you say people get anxious and then you can, you can see all this raw material of stuff, do you think people are more sensitive now to everything in a positive way or a negative way? Like I think people are too overly sensitive in a negative way. Like because it, like the outrage culture that we have now and like I'm, and I'm not I'm not even talking about subjects where like if you're blatantly racist or homophobic oh, yeah. like yeah clearly you can be sensitive about that yeah. that's allowed because you're like clearly putting people down yeah but like you know there was a time when you could you know pull practical jokes on people and people didn't call the police on you they would understand like okay this is just a joke i need to relax or someone is just talking about how they feel and it's just how they feel yeah. I should just let them be and have their their shit to themselves. Yeah. Like do you think it's this the sensitivity is more positive or negative? Oh, I think I it's think, negative. I think it's way negative. Okay. Yeah, I think like uh I, it's so difficult to like things are so polarized I think right now where you see people like to me I think you know like when Donald Trump got erect, elected he got uh, elected when he was when he had an erection like, <laughs> oh that's so nasty to think about <laughs> donald trump's boner oh my god do you think he takes boner pills do you think he has to take boner pills yeah, like to have sex too. yeah i mean if he eats so much shit that it, there's like no way his he's dick healthy works. enough to, <laughs> to have a healthy dick yeah yeah i'm so that's such a huge sidebar but i just i could not strike in on that we, we got a little too like we got too real for a second. I wanted to bring it home because we are. I, I I want people to know how we are silly still. <laughs> yeah, his 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 balls have to be disgusting. Um. <laughs> oh my god, dude. probably like they probably sag to his knees. That would hurt. Balls that low. Balls that low. We used to like you run right. You yeah, run. Yeah. You know how like when you first start running, like your dick isn't quite like, you, you know how it does that like fight or flight thing? Yeah. yeah. Where it kind of like goes inside you a little bit. Cause it's yeah. like, oh, we're doing work right now or we're escaping from something. I don't want to lose this. Right. So it like retreats inside. Yeah. You know how, you ever have those runs where it doesn't do that for yeah. like the first like oh 10 God. to 15 yeah. minutes? <laughs> and you're just like, it's slightly rubbing on your shorts and then it's like, oh no, I'm getting a chub. <laughs> And I'm in a very public place right now, and I'm wearing short shorts. <laughs> you like, you like, will put your hand in your pocket and like slowly try to put it in your waistband. No, like my my running shorts don't have pockets. I can't even do that. I oh once my had, god! I once had to up tuck with like Nike racing shorts that I had from like high school or college. You know, like the ones that have the slit on the side, like you yeah. can see your thigh and everything. I had to up tuck once from that. And the shirt I had wasn't really that long. So I was showing some side tube at some no point. No way. Yeah, I was on a dirt road, so I think I was okay. But like <laughs> cars passing by could have maybe seen something. Dude, that's crazy. Uh, I, I feel like, I mean, it's more, I feel like definitely when we were going through puberty, you get you get those random boners sure. all the time. The narbs. The nar is that what it's called? Narb, yeah, no apparent reason boner. <laughs> You've never heard of that? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you'd get these narbs like in class and then you get called to like go present or go in front of that class. Oh, and, like, brutal. Yeah. Don't you think really? uh, Well did that ever happen to you where you yeah. it really you I feel like the the stress from that would just deflate you entirely at that point. You'd be like as soon as your name is called it's just right down. I mean, I was thinking about boobies all the time, so it was hard from it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it was, it was hard. That's it. <laughs> Period. It was hard. <laughs> but uh, over time, like I've gotten better at being able to like if if you start do getting like a random chub, like you, you can kind of hide it faster. A little bit, yeah. I I've always thought like it's kind of difficult now, especially with fashion, how like pants are getting tighter. And oh, cell phones yeah. are getting bigger, yeah. so like that doesn't work. But then also at the same time, pants are getting tiger, and ti tiger. <laughs> There's a tiger in There's my pants. <laughs> There's a tiger beneath my fly, <laughs> and I need to release it. No, because like, I was wearing these jeans uh, last week. I was getting dinner and ice cream with Sid, yeah. and 
I was eating the ice cream. The ice cream was so... I'm pretty sure it was the ice cream. It wasn't the fact that Sid was looking great that night. Yeah. Sorry, Sid. I'm pretty sure it was the ice cream and she would understand. <laughs> um, I got like a half chub while eating this ice cream and walking. No way. And like I had these tight jeans on. You could see this little like... Yeah. Like little slot like just kind of sitting on the side of my leg and she, she's dying obviously and i'm walking down uh michigan ave in detroit with her and <laughs> just with this half chub and ice cream in my hand <laughs> just loving life that boner cream yeah that's awesome i don't know there must have been something that ice cream it was uh cold truth dude that place is amazing cold truth yeah, yeah. i i got the wrong order they didn't they didn't take my order correctly but it worked out in a great way because I asked for uh, chocolate ice cream with sea salt sprinkled on it. Yeah. What they did was give me sea salt caramel ice cream on top and then chocolate oh, ice cream on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, it didn't matter. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. That's what did it. Yeah. So they they used to be in an alleyway uh, in Detroit, like in Eastern Market, mm. and then I think they got in trouble by the city because they were selling ice, ice cream on. in an alley. It was awesome. It was sweet. But now they're like, what, Grandma Bob's? Yeah, something. which and I got the pizza there too before yeah. I had the, the sausage and pistachio pizza, which, like, pistachio ice cream is my favorite. The fact that they Same. put it on pizza yeah. changed my life. It's good. I ne oh, it was so good. Yeah, oh, I never yeah. thought to do to put nuts on pizza. That was weird flavors, like cheese and... Never had cheese pizza? <laughs> no, I mean like cheese, cheese and nuts together. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's what you put on a charcuterie board. Why wouldn't you put cheese and nuts? Like, that's wow, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even think you've about had that. that. But yeah, you yeah. have like your salami, the cheddar, and then like there's a cashew sitting on the side or something. It's just in a different form. Yeah, it's just not baked. I guess is what you were thinking. It's baked in an oven. Yeah, baked in an oven. It's not as like bougie as a charcuterie board. That's a bougie. How do you feel about that word? Bougie? Do you think people use that a lot? I think I th people use that a lot. I think people did use it a lot. Did? I, I think they still use it a lot. Who's you? My, my dad said it last <laughs> week. My dad's in his 60s and Bougie. he said it. I know, he's like, we were making, I was home. My, my, my parents were making uh, like salmon tacos. Yeah. And it, they were doing a lot of the stuff from scratch. Like I had to make the guacamole and um, my dad like put a rub on the fish and uh, put the tortillas in the oven and like had them get like crispied up and everything and they got this cheese that's like it comes in a block and you just pull it apart it like breaks off and yeah. crumbles or whatever um and i was like oh wow yeah this is cool we're like making stuff like from scratch we're not just throwing it in the oven and, and heating it up and he's like yeah we're getting really bougie with our uh what, um oh my god what did he say Oh, he, no, he, the rub that he used on the salmon was a, ch a chipotle rub, but he kept saying chipotle. Oh, yeah. My dad also pronounces most Mexican dishes incorrectly, and I don't think he's doing it to be funny. I think it's just how he speaks in general. <laughs> yeah. Like, he'll say chimichangas, <laughs> and 